Waterbury. I am the CEO and president of Love Everlasting Ministries and the ministry's mission is to connect men and women across the world about it to the reality of who they are as the bride of Christ but mostly also to connect us together and not be isolated across the world brothers and sisters in Christ and as we begin to do that from nation to nation um, we came to the point where we realized we needed to also help women in some impoverished countries be able to do more for themselves so that they can connect. There is a there's an issue here in terms of in many of these impoverished countries about being able to not be isolated in their poverty. And we began to realize with It Love Everlasting Ministries that we were almost putting the cart before the horse. That in these impoverished countries we needed to do something more practical as we were given the gospel. And that's where Reap What You Sow came into being. As I was trying to figure out how the Lord wanted me to help the women of Malawi, he led me to an amazing person whom I quickly became friends with, Annie Chikwaza. Annie is called the mother of Malawi because of her work with the orphans in the country. She became my role model and an encourager. She is a great example of someone doing the Lord's work despite uncertainties and hardship. She and her husband opened up an award-winning orphanage which has helped hundreds of children, bringing hope and love to the Malawian community. And she saw in me that I could do the same. In fact, she would help inspire me to begin a tailoring school for women. You know, I, I went to ask my husband now. You know, he, I said, why did you have 10 children? 10. And he says, well, he says, because that's what makes, uh, he says, I wouldn't do that now anymore. But he says, at that time, that's what makes a man proud. Because that's what gives the woman value. With other words, you and I have a nice house, we have a, a nice car, we have a washing machine, uh, well, all these things uh, which are important to us. That gives us value. <laughs> We've got money in the bank, and whatever gives us value is very different than what gives them value. It's the, 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 how many children have I got? I, I'm going to have a big village. So the culture in Malawi is that women are generally the workers. They're going to be the ones who work in the villages, sometimes getting up at 3.30, 4 in the morning, and it begins early then to draw water, to make the meals, take care of the children, take care of basically all the running of the village. Uh, you'll see women walking around with a baby on their back, a baby on the front, a big thing on their head. They're usually dragging something behind them because these are the workers of Malawi. Women are the workers. But often the culture doesn't necessarily provide them with a way to make money. There's not an education set in place for women, especially in the villages, because they're lower income and they can't really afford that education. 90% uh, of women will put their finances, what they earn, back into the family. Only 40% of men will put their finances back into the family. But when the men leave for varying reasons, either to go get work or for, they just leave their wives for whatever reason, then you leave these women in these villages with no way to support anybody and support their children and the rest of the children in those villages. And if you go into these villages, you're going to see mostly women. There are women taking care of either the older people and the children. Their children, their grandchildren, their, you know, rest of their, their relatives' children and the rest of the people in the village. And they have no way of making any money to do so. So that leaves them to forage and they don't have any hope for an education. The parents can provide for the kids, so the kids, you know, find their own way. So they break loose, go to town, go get in town, and start begging. 
uh, for their own you know, living. That's the primary reason. Because of poverty, they don't have the basic materials, basic food, basic clothing. Uh, they think going onto the streets, they will get people, show them you know, kindness and provide for them. Poverty brings stress. And there is a huge amount of poverty in the country. Uh, so uh, that brings stress and that still causes um, you know, a lot of abuse. It gets better when they get educated. You know, there is education in these countries, but it's only for those who can afford it. And these women in the lower socioeconomic e echelon of the culture have no way to get that. So that's one of the things, reasons what we're doing here with the Reap What You Sow project. We only take the lowest of the low in the economic order of that. I was very, very happy when I heard that I am the one, I am chosen to start telling school. <laughs> I knelt down and thank God. And so I prayed for you and the Agape family because I said, God, why choosing me? Among many people, you are choosing me. How special I am. But it's the, by his grace. Well, tailoring schools, tailors in, in Malawi, that's an excellent business for women. They don't, you know, they don't have Walmart, and they don't have a place where they can go buy clothes. People in Malawi and in these countries, Kenya, Mozambique, um, these countries get their clothes from tailors. And so that's a, that's a perfect profession for women. So here we are at the Reap What You Sow School here in Blantyre, Malawi. Come here with me. And so we see here are some of the students. They're sewing away. We got four of the students in here doing their sewing. They're finishing up a lot of projects. So these ladies have been in this program for their at the end of the six month training. So let's come on in here. This is the other room of the school. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. So these are the other students. We have 10 students. This is Pat Patricia here. Patricia is our teacher. Hi, Patricia. Hi. I was called to help the women because they like they were like of for money, maybe school fees for the children, maybe a lot clothes for the children. So I was called to teach them. It was very difficult to tell you the truth because being a widow, being one parent, it's not a joke because everything depends on you school fees, whatever needed in the house for the kids, house rent, everything. So I was struggled. Banja Manga is not in the forest, in time and distance, and the business. The matter of Gono Sadia, Zinan Dissin, I was so I was so very young. Yes, because I was looking first at the market there, what do people need? So I know what people need because I'm also a business lady. When I've known that now they have uh, managed to uh, use the, the machine, they have managed to make straight lines, rounded V, rectangles, now that's when they start making clothes. At first it was like uh, very difficult. That I will not make it. Maybe it's better for me to go back. But I said, God, you chose me for a purpose. So I need the, that purpose, people to know that you are God. And indeed, God did that. Well, these women are getting some independence that they've never had before. Uh, we have women, especially that have already graduated in the last class, and hopefully in this next, next class, that for the first time in their lives have bank accounts and are able to take care of not only their families, but the rest of the villages. <laughs> One of our students that we're very proud of is Elizabeth because she started her business and it was actually, it has been the most successful. 
Um, she has called it Thank You Jesus Tailoring Shop, and we, it was one of the first ones we visited when we got here. It's, we're very, very proud of all the work that Elizabeth has done. I know that shop you know, and then the best of you, but it is in the shop you find out. Then they men they all you did not go so as over a commander is an police. Comano and Andy Rola would in the go better, digger goodisa. This are basalent. Then the number of shop of Bano, why did someone tamera banova basino and Panamba would dig gulas over a gundiziwa, Motipanova did in my customer or two. And I had known Elizabeth because she attends Agape Life, but she was so quiet and so withdrawn, and she always walked with her head down and her, and her shoulders stooped, and so she'd never spoken to me. So I actually met her as a student here, and again, would barely speak. Well, she wouldn't speak. She didn't speak to me at all. She would, very shy, head down, would barely smile. Um, she actually had what I would have considered a lazy eye. So she had a really rough life, and I would have seen Elizabeth as one of those women that Never what didn't know joy. You know, there's no joy in this woman's life. A business and the is a one bit in the Tundi Banjalanga, Moti, Igundiba Satan, the Zaja Kujaba Kumo, Kumaso, Mana Fizin, the one is a Kumuri Bida, Maso Moyanga was Sita, one bit, Nanimontoso and Tendi, Doom, Pavi Kumano Banobai, Moyanga was Sita, indeed. Elizabeth was one of our top students. She took to sewing so very quickly. Andrew Umali is my administrator here in Blantyre. And so he would send me progress reports. We have progress reports sent every month and, and Andrew will send these progress reports and let us know. And he just kept telling us that Elizabeth was just on the top of her class and that she was doing so well. And I, it surprised me because of what I'd seen of Elizabeth and knowing that she was, you know, one of those students that was so quiet and seemed like she, well, I mean, I, I saw her not even really seemed interested, almost, you know, like she was so withdrawn. But I think what it was, it was just, as I've spoken of before, it's that hope. For the very first time, Elizabeth had hope. Uh, when we first went to Elizabeth's shop um, down in the market, I could, it's the first time I've seen Elizabeth since she graduated last year. And seeing her in the midst of that market, in that very beautiful shop, she met us at the door and she was ear to ear smiling, standing up straight, shoulders were back, she was standing like this. I, her eye looked normal. I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know how that happens, but she just looked wonderful and she was so proud. Her hair was fixed beautiful, she had her nice dress on and she just could not wait for us to come in there. She, I just saw a different woman. The woman has been transformed. And I know Priscilla Mgala had told me she used that word. She kept saying, when you see Elizabeth, you will see that she's been transformed. And that was the word she kept using. And then when I saw Elizabeth, that would have been the only word I could have used. Elizabeth has been transformed. And I'm telling you, it is hope. That's the word. Elizabeth, she's one of the ones who said, now I have a bank account, now I tithe. And she's never been able to tithe before. And that has always been so sad for her that she was never able to go forward and tithe. And now she can tithe. I, we have another student who's able to do the same thing. That it's been so exciting for her that she gets to tithe now. Um, these women, that having the hope for the end of poverty for them, just, it really does transform them. So yeah, seeing Elizabeth and seeing her in that transformed state, uh, it made, I, it was one of the first stops we made and I was already on cloud nine. My trip to witness the second graduation of the Reap What You Sow School and to speak at an LEM sponsored conference in Mozambique was a lot of fun as I brought along a team to accompany me on my travels. Alex Lopez, my assistant, Sandra Ward, a representative from PBS in Tucson, 
Lakeisha Dion, a business specialist, and Janet Hand, a local representative from K-Love Radio. These four women were so supportive of the work that the school was doing in Malawi, and Alex even brought money donated from her church to give to Elizabeth to help finance her business. Okay, so this is coming from my church at Victory Worship Center, uh, and we want you to take it and do what you need to help your family, your village, anything you need. And the business. And yes, your business. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Everything. Mm. Yeah. She, she has hit that. Yeah, yeah. Can I pray with you? Can I pray? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Dear Lord, we just lift you high. So high today, Lord. Thank you so much for blessing us with this opportunity to come here. Mm -hmm. And to meet your wonderful, wonderful people, I pray blessings upon blessings for this money to do what you have, what you want with it. Yes, thank you. To bless her family, her business, her ministry, everything she does will bless her. Mm -hmm. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The team wanted to support Elizabeth's business any way that they could, and so they all bought dresses for their daughters. Elizabeth wrote down the measurements they gave her, and she began to work. After a couple of days, Elizabeth visited the team again with three beautiful new dresses for them to take back to the States. All of them were so brightly colored with amazing detail, and the team members were just astounded by how well made they were. Honestly, I think the team members were jealous of their daughters. After receiving her payments, Elizabeth made quite a bit of money in terms of Malawian currency. 49,000 kwacha. That's obviously a profit. Yeah, tailoring is one of those uh, necessary skills that they can easily make money and they can do it in their home they can start a business it's transferable so yeah and and so because it was a natural way for us to train them um, and then be able to give them that machine this just seemed like one of the easiest and most beneficial ways because then they can train their children um, they can train other people in the village that machine will sustain them you can be part of this life-changing school in Malawi. Your donation will help women in one of the poorest countries in the world feed their families and educate their children. Students at the Reap What You Sow Tailoring School get their sewing machine, materials, and supplies absolutely free of charge. They receive six months of hands-on training as well as an education on accounting and business skills. Your donation goes straight to the existing school and will help us open up more schools in other needy countries. We are changing lives one woman, one business at a time. By Empowering one woman, we are literally changing the course of an entire family, offering hope for the next generation. For a gift of $30 or more, you will receive a free copy of Dr. Deb Waterbury's latest book, The Lies That Bind and the Truth That Sets You Free. Your donation is 100% tax deductible. Donate today or send your donation to P.O. Box 91424, Tucson, Arizona 85752. Together, we can make a difference. Well, you know, small businesses are the backbone of the economy in any country. So if they can prosper, the economy will prosper. Now, for example, if you have a household and a mother is a good earner, whatever business they get involved with, you know, be it sewing or, or whatever, but if they earn finances, that would mean not only they could take care of their own children, but they could take care of other children of that. So the extended family will be extended by her earning an income. And that is gonna help the orphans of, their, of her own family. You know, because families are, are the most important part of their lives. Right now, I'm very, very happy and they have big plans because I'll make sure I'll, I'll do my business with 
with my hands because I don't want to struggle again because God has given me something very special. So I will do that with my heart to give a tenth to him and also to take care of everything at home. After two successful years of aiding and impacting the lives of women in Malawi, God was putting it on my heart to serve women in other countries in Africa as well. And so Augustine and I began exploring possible locations for a new Reap What You Sow school to see where we could possibly make changes in women's lives there. We made our way into the nation of Mozambique where we found a remote village that God revealed to be the future site of the next school. We are currently in the Chidzulamundo village. This village is in Mozambique. It is a village that I visited when I was here looking into starting the next branch of the Reap What You Sow project. These people are absolutely some of the kindest people I've ever met. They've welcomed us with open arms. They met us when we first got here with just this singing and dancing and escorted us all the way in. They've been very, very kind. They're very, very remote. This is a very remote village. It, it's dirt road most of the way. Not a lot of people get out here, certainly not a lot of white people get out here, but this is, these people are kind and wonderful and welcoming, but it is very remote and very, very poor. And it was as soon as we walked into the Chidzulamundo village, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that this was the village where the next branch would be. But I know in Malawi, the men treat the women with such dignity and respect, even though the culture doesn't necessarily provide for an education for women, especially women in the lower classes, the men treat them so with so much respect. And I see that here in Mozambique as well. So I think it's not necessarily an, an issue of, of them being mistreated by men. It is more of an issue of a culture that doesn't really provide for lower income women to get an education. And that's where I think the Reap What You Sow project kicks in and where we step in. And you know, for us, we have so much money in our country and we have so many ways that we can help our brothers and sisters in Christ in less fortunate countries to be able to stand up, especially these women. Because um, I really do believe that if we want to change the course of these nations, we really do have to start with the women. So if we start with these women, we're going to change the lives of their children, change the lives of the villages, and then we'll change the lives of these nations. I, I, I feel that the Lord is so about in empowering women in Christ who have no hope outside of that and to show them the love, you know, being Jesus with skin on, being a servant disciple, and that's what we're doing. We're showing them that we across the pond love them and that we, we want to love them the way Jesus loves and serve them. You know, this is about servanthood. This is about serving them. And I don't want to throw money at them. I don't want to just, you know, give them, I want to show them how we want to empower them so that they can do this on their own. <laughs> it is a good thing for a woman in Malawi to have a business. Because if a, a woman have a business, you, 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 you try to do whatever you can do to help everyone at home, even to bring food at home. Because you can see even those that are married, the husband sometimes do, uh, do some, uh, they fail to help the family properly. So the woman, if she's doing the business, she tries whatever she can do to support the family. So it's a, a very good thing for uh, uh, ladies in Malawi or women in Malawi to do business. business Leave what is so skilled. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's a, you have given us a special thing, a good gift. We never thought of having such a beautiful thing in Malawi, but you, you have done a very good thing. Live what you saw is doing a good thing to us women. 
they have independence. They're help taking care of their families, their husbands. A lot of them have husbands who are invalids. And for the first time, they're getting independent, standing up on them, up, up by themselves. They're, they're brighter, their faces are brighter. They're not impoverished anymore. There's hope. And you know, there's a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing what just having a skill, knowing that you're going to be able to have a some way that you're going to be able to take care of your children, let them be able to go to school. I mean, one of our students, for the very first time, she's been able to pay her school tuition, school fees for her children. She's never been able to do that before. This is hope, and this is something they haven't had before. You give a person hope, and you're going to give them a smile for the very first time. And that's contagious, because then everybody else in the village will have hope. And, then, and it's just one sewing machine. I mean, one sewing machine and one woman who has this kind of skill given to her will give hope to a village. It's an amazing thing. Hope is contagious. Hey, <laughs> Mulungwa <laughs> <laughs>